today in this very video that you are watching right now, I am going to prove that GMRS users and ham radio operators can get along in harmony. But not only that, I am also going to prove that I am actually capable of learning something and I will prove that Josh from Ham Radio Crash Course can put up with me for an entire day. In case you were not aware, Josh runs a little YouTube channel called Ham Radio Crash Course, where he teaches people how to get into ham radio. I will put a link to Josh's YouTube channel, Ham Radio Crash Course, in the information section below, or perhaps to the side wherever YouTube puts the information section these days, because he needs all of the subscribers that he can get. And I promised him, I would help him out. So I showed Josh a little bit about GMRS and a little bit about off-roading, and Josh introduced me to the exciting world of ham radio. And this is what it looked like. So we loaded up the Nata Rubicon with lots of cheeseburgers and Pepsi, and we went to the peak of Gold Mountain, which is just east of Big Bear Lake in California, at an elevation of 8,200 feet. And Josh demonstrated to me something that the ham radio guys call summits on the air and parks on the air. Soda or poda for short. And that is where the ham radio operators go to interesting places and they see how many fars they can talk on their radios. So after running over some of the wildlife, we made our way up to the top of Gold Mountain and we hiked out to the peak. From there, Josh set up his portable radio equipment and I tried my best to shut up and learn something for once. Right, tell us why we're here. Why are we, where are we ah. and why the hell are we here? Okay, so we are out here. We're gonna play some ham radio, but specifically we are going to attempt a summit on the air activation. And by activating, all that means is you go to a high location that's identified in the SOTA database you make four contacts and you get points based off of how tall the summit is. So it's, it's Pokemon for mountains. So I brought a 100 watt multiband amateur radio, high frequency, so HF radio. I, we bumped into some hams on the way up and Adam K6ARK said, France is available to us right, right. now, technically. Now, We'll know when we get the radio on the air exactly, you know, who's out there and, and more specifically, who's going to come and try and talk to us because we're, we're going we're gonna to post that we're out here and then people will actually try and find us on the frequency to make a contact with us because the people back home, they get points for chasing us when we're out here. So what he's saying is, I don't know if I'm on camera, <laughs> in the GMRS world, we talk to other people in our jeeps or wherever the other person we're talking to for, right. a, for an actual reason. Uh, I need to yeah. talk to my friend on in his jeep when I'm in my jeep. Kind so it's stuff. point to point, mm -hmm. finding, getting information or just talking, purposeful talking. Whereas you are just going to be calling somebody a stranger mm -hmm. and just talking for the sake of talking. This is like a, a game we're playing for points. It's a it's our hobby is to come out and do stuff like this. And how much would you say for just what you brought here today for your hobby? How much how much did this hobby cost you just for this part here? Um, okay, I brought way more than we need. Redundancy like threefold. But if somebody wanted to to do this this antenna and a relatively priced uh, radio that would work with it. $450 for the radio, and this is about $200. Okay. So 600 bucks, mm -hmm. and unlike my GMRS radio, which I'm lucky if I can talk 20 or 30 miles, you will be talking to France. Potentially. Big Bear Lake, maybe to France. Maybe. Okay. We're, so, that's what we're hoping for, but we'll see. It's kind of like fishing. So this is a, a telescopic antenna, meaning it, it packs down into kind of like your, your the ham radio James Bond attache case type thing. What um, is that? This is a loading coil. So we're going to we're gonna start out on 20 meters. So like GMRS is around 70 centimeters, 20 meters. What so frequency would that be? Uh, 14 megahertz-ish. Wow, okay. So we need a whole lot of wire, but the feasibility of putting 14 feet of wire, 14 to 16 feet of wire just straight up, sometimes not the most feasible thing. So they put it in a coil. Just wrap it all up. Wrap it all the way up, and we use these tap points to short it. 
So oh, this so can, this antenna actually goes from 40 meters all the way up to six meters. Okay. It, it doesn't have to be perfectly vertical, although if it is, you know, that's that's great. If not, that's okay too. Okay. Now, these antennas will like couple to your body. So we're trying to avoid that from happening. What does that mean? I affect the antenna, the, the radiating capability of the antenna. So I try to stay a bit away from it or wherever I tune it is where I'm gonna sit to with my radio. So I need to adjust the antenna. Now, um, you could do that two ways. We could adjust the length of the radial. In my case, I'm gonna take a, a, a tap out of the loop here. I'm sorry, I'm gonna take a, a coil out of the, the loading coil just to see if that does it because I just kind of winged it on where I thought this was lined up to. So that should be it, but we'll check again. It's okay. Your antenna is basically out of tune. That's right. All right. Meaning you have a high SWR. That's right. How high is it? How far off tune are you? Uh, depending on which frequency I would want to use, I was probably four to one SWR, okay. five to one SWR. Okay. That's not good. Not good. A GMRS guy could tell you that that's not good. That's not good. And that means that you're going to lose like 50% or 45% of your power at it, five to one? Yeah, in, in, in the form of heat or reflect it back into the radio. Right. But that's instead of 100 watts going out your antenna, you'd be getting 40 or 50 watts going out your antenna. Uh, right? right. So the, the radio I brought is an older radio, but it does HF, VHF, and UHF at 100 watts. So it's pretty good for field type setups like this. So we'll just set it up right here and go to town. I am using a nine amp hour lithium phosphate, lithium iron phosphate, sorry, LIFEPO as we often call it, uh, battery. Nine amp hours is probably all we need uh, to be able to do the activation. But in true, just going over the top, I also brought a solar charge controller and a small panel. We ha are recently over, or reasonably overcast though, so we, we may not use this. Likely won't get much out of it. So here we go. It has a Roger beep, right? Uh, yeah, of course, of course, that's right. I'm already passing a ton of voices. I'm just going to roughly the area I told people we'd be on, which was uh, 14.320. So Josh, when I listen to that, it just sounds kind of like a shit show of everybody talking over each other. It, Is... it can be, uh, it, that can happen because um, it sounds like they're running a net or they're properly, they're doing an activation. And what'll generally happen is we call it a pileup. So if I start calling for people to, to make a contact with me, if there's a lot of people that are waiting, they're all gonna come in at, at once. And then it's my job to basically come back and say, station kilo November seven something, come back and then everybody should shut up. And it's just that one station that re returns. You know, if we, if we hear some kind of crazy station out there, um, they could be faint, very faint signal. And so we want to use phonetics, repeat things so that we can complete that contact because we want to... You want to get your points. That's right. Well, you know, the, the contact, the two-way contact, right? right? For, at the very least, when you we call it DX, when it's a long distance contact, we want to put that in our logbook. It's like, you know, it's, it's like collecting a cool stamp. <laughs> <laughs> to be clear, mm -hmm. so that everyone understands. Uh, you're not using no repeaters. No repeaters. Direct radio to radio using that antenna. That's right. Right there to hopefully... Who knows? France. But but FARs, many FARs. Many FARs. Many FARs. And actually, I'd say it's quite a bit farser than you can do with GMRS. Let's find a frequency and get started here. Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu. Is this frequency in use? Is this frequency in use? Well, I'm uh, calling oh. you. Can I help you? Uh, what's your call and where are you? Uh, this is Kilo India 6 November Alpha Zulu. I'm on Gold Mountain in Big Bear, California. Uh, Gold Mountain, okay. I'm going to put that in my log. And what's your uh, call sign there? I missed it, sorry. Yeah, don't worry. My, uh, my call is Kilo 7 India Oscar Canada, K7IOC. And I'm on Camino Island. That's in Northwest Washington State. No worries. I'd like to know your grid square also and county. Okay. All right, we are at designator W6-CT053, Gold Mountain. 
This is also a parks on the air activation. So this is Kilo 4463. All right, now tell us what all that grid square and yes. why not, okay, so I assume that so he knows where you are, right? Mm -hmm. Why Correct. Why don't, is that, is a grid square easier than a GPS coordinate? Uh, they're used interchangeably sometimes. Grid squares is just a universal way of... Uh, you know, I've never heard of it. You, oh, grid squares is not a ham radio thing. Okay. Grid right. squares is, is used uh, for land navigation, um, oceaneering, all, all kinds of stuff. CQ Parks on the air, CQ Parks on the air, Kilo India 6, November, Alpha Zulu, CQ Parks on the air, CQ Parks on the air. So what I'm doing is kind of keeping my claim to the frequency because we don't want to lose it. Um, but the other things, we are on Park Kilo 4463, which is a designator for the San Gabriel Forest, right? I think that's what we were talking about. San Bernardino. San Bernardino Forest. And in parallel to that, this summit, we use the same uh, indicators as the benchmarks that are on the, the summit that we're sitting right next Those to. Those are USGS survey USGS markers. USGS survey markers. We're at W6-CT053. That is the summit uh, uh, identifier. So we use the same thing. The, the Parks on the Air website actually has what we call spots. The website will actually show where people um, are activating. Uh, somebody's calling back to me right now. Station calling, come on one more time. Uh, got a 4463, have you about a 5-2 South Dakota, over. Copy the 5-2, copy the 5-2, thanks for that. 7-3, CQ Parks on the air, CQ Parks on the air. Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu. Charlie, Charlie, got the 5.5, five, 55 both ways. Thank you for the contact. Yeah, you're, you're coming up and down. That might be on my end. So uh, thanks for the contact, buddy. I appreciate it. 7-3. Okay, that was Charlie, Red Summit RF, who's also a YouTuber who does summits on the air. So where is he? Uh, Arizona. Okay, so we got... So we've got uh, November Juliet 7 Victor, K6 Juliet Gulf Alpha, W zero C B means nothing to us. Where and, are they? Uh, okay, Arizona, California. This is South Dakota and Washington. Just forgotten how to speak English. We Tell got to it. keep going, otherwise we're going to lose our frequency. Go. This is Kilo India six, November Alpha Zulu for Parks on the Air. CQ Parks on the Air. CQ Parks on the Air. Kilo India six, November Alpha Zulu. Uh, QSL got the. Uh, Canadian station, very much. Thank you for the uh, contact. What was the state again? Saskatchewan. Roger, Roger. I have you at uh, five seven Idaho, five seven Idaho, over. Five by nine, a little bit of QSB near Albuquerque, near Albuquerque, and keep up the good work on the video. Seventy three. South Carolina, QSL. South Carolina. All right, thanks for the 5-5 five five into Utah. All right, so we got a couple of park to parks and summit to summits, and that's like double points. It's Ooh. like it's like I activated them, they activated me, and vice versa, right? You get double points. So but, exciting. So yeah. this is, when the shit hits the fan, this is what you use, right? Well, I, I would use both. Okay. Uh, you know- Both what? GMRS, ham radio. Well, for long, so- For long distance, yeah, there's no other the, game in town. When the walkers are walking down the streets- That's it, we're all gonna come up here and and but you don't have to go up here, right? No, if you've got a big all. antenna, yeah. you can use this type of radio, this band, mm -hmm. and and get these kind of distances without yeah. 100 watts, you say? I have another radio that's 10 watts, and we probably would have done just as well. Okay. Uh, maybe a different antenna. This is actually not the most efficient antenna, but it's easy to set up. Pretty fast, too. I don't know how long we've been out here, how long we've been playing. It seems like freaking hours, Josh. Well, um, I think in reality, <laughs> regardless of how Randy feels, I think it's been about 30 minutes. Not that I'm bored. 
No, it is. It is. To, to be fair, <laughs> to uh, be fair, it is. I am impressed that uh, you can get these kind of distances with just a relatively simple setup. Well, you, you the, do have the SHTF aspect of this. That's what I meant. Because yeah. this would be the same thing. Like you're literally looking at an off-grid setup. We've got a solar panel here. Um, I actually have a laptop in this bag as well that will interface with this. I could I could get my email while we were sitting here if I wanted to. Lots of options exist here to, to do different things. We're just enjoying the funzy hobby aspect of it, but it's very closely adjacent to Prepare, personal preparedness right. and communications. Okay. So, wow, Josh, it almost makes me think that I should go out and get a ham license. <laughs> no, no, I was going to say, no, I, no. I can see the sarcasm <laughs> from here. <laughs> So guys, I got to wrap up here. We, we got to make it down the, the mountain. So uh, I'm going to go in QRT, Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu. I'm uh, abating the frequency, freeing it up, QRT. All right. All right, so. Oh, somebody was yelling at me. All right. This, the whole point of this video is really to show that ham and GMRS people can get along. Absolutely. Peacefully. Yes. We, we, there <laughs> does not have to be resentment. There isn't. Between ham and GMRS people, unless you're a sad ham, and if you don't know the difference between a sad ham and a happy ham. I'll take happy ham. There are sad hams and happy hams. That's right. There's no reason why you can't have the utility of GMRS. It's a valuable tool when you are doing something and you want a radio that works. And there's no reason that you can't be a ham radio operator too and enjoy some aspects of it. No problem, guys. Say goodbye, Josh. 7-3. 69. <laughs>